It's the Funk HS260. And I got to play with this a little bit at CES and I refuse to do any listening tests at CES because it's very noisy there. And uh, also I like to do my own listening tests with my, with my own music. I don't want it to be controlled by anybody. It's rare that a headset uh, piques my interest, but these are um, quite interesting because you can take off the microphone entirely and use them as a set of headphones. Uh, they're very well built because I know you guys, well, a lot of you guys saw the video from CES where I tried to break these things. I'm not gonna do it with these but because I, I already tried to break them and um, yeah, I was pretty impressed by the build quality. And also, these have a uh, velour set of ear pads and a leather set of ear pads. So let's go ahead and take them out of the box and do some audio tests with them and just show you exactly what we have here. I'm also going to test out the microphone in this video. All right, so we got a detachable mic and the headphones themselves. I guess, you know, it's, hey, headphones, headset. Headphones, headset. All right, first off, let's get our uh, cable going here. It's a three meter long cable. It's braided and it has the classic funk um, black with um, sort of a orange stripes. So you'll know that this is your funk behind the uh, computer when you plug this in. And they've done something extremely interesting with the cable. Now um, you can plug this in to either side of your headset. Plug it in this side, plug it on that side. And you can put the microphone on either side you want as well. I don't know, that's kind of, that's some kind of witchcraft they're doing. Also, this is a long cable, but it does have a bit of Velcro right here, so you can wind it up and then tie it down with the Velcro. Okay, the uh, the headset itself feels very nice. The uh, the cans themselves have a rubberized coating on the outside. I like that. Uh, plastic all the way around the top here, and this, you know, this feels like a Sennheiser, as, as a matter of fact. Like the band does have, um, it's very reminiscent of a Sennheiser. So we have leather on the top here and foam. And then we have the velour ear pads come pre-installed on here. Now the specs of this unit, 50 millimeter drivers, and uh, they say that they are tuned specifically for gaming, and I'll try those out in a minute. The uh, frequency response range is 20 to 20,000 hertz, um, and the impedance is 32 ohms. So these could be, you know, if you take off the microphone, you could use these just fine with a portable audio device, hang out around town, and then when you get home, plug in your microphone and game. As far as the adjustments go, the plastic on the side just kind of slides up and down. It's actually pretty slick and sleek. They do look nice as well. Stretch them way out. It doesn't matter, you can, they'll, they'll break in a little bit. Let me put them on. I tried this to see, yes, unless they had some special pair. The microphone is flexible and um, there is a mute right on the, the, the mic. Your mute button is right there on the mic. And furthermore, the volume is right here on the right hand side, so the volume is right there. Let's go ahead and take the, uh, the, the pads off and let you guys see how it looks on the inside. Now the pads come off easily. You look for the indentation in the pads and then you pinch and pull. Just get that one spot loose. And after that you just rotate it and it comes right off. Old school, yeah. And there's your 50 millimeter driver right there. And then we can put the, uh, the leather pads on. The leather pads are going to change the sound signature ever so slightly, but I'll try both of these out. And uh, I guess I should, I'll try them out and I'll come back. Let's do the microphone test right now. So this will be uh, sort of indicative of how it's going to sound if you're streaming or whatever. All right, let's fight stuff. That's how I like to start my games with a boss battle. All right, it's about enough of a microphone check. You guys should have a good idea. All right, here's the microphone just by itself so you can get an idea of how it sounds without any games in the background. All right, let's look at the frequency response graph and talk about the experience that they've created specifically for you guys. And this is mainly an experience that they want you to have in games. The mids are up and the highs, it kind of goes up into the highs just a little bit. Um, the base on the frequency response graph, this is kind of strange. It says that the base is a little muted, but I found these to have a decently full base. So I don't know, I'm like disagreeing with the science here. It says that it's like five or 10 dB down on some of the base frequencies, but uh, these do have full base. Now I will say that the low end of the base does drop off. Uh, so the base you get is um, a little higher um, and maybe quite not as low and boomy. So, it, but there is a decent amount of bass in these. Uh, I also found that the, since there's, since the mids are up, you know, quite a bit uh, around the speech area compared to everything else, and also you get a little bit of highs, I, I found that some music uh, sounds really good while others sounds a, a slight bit muddy. Uh, for instance, if you, if you have, uh, you know, your favorite vocalist, their vocals are gonna be nice and clean because they've raised the frequencies a little bit uh, right near where human speech resides. And, um, you know, acapella music is gonna sound pretty good. 
And a lot of today's modern music is going to sound pretty good. I, I didn't think metal sounded very good. Um, I found that the, the mid frequencies kind of drown, drown out some of the stuff that was going on. So I lost a bit of the nuances there and, and that sort of music. But these are really made for games and in games, uh, voices and footsteps are, are really clear. Um, I mean, like gunfire and that sort of thing is really clear. You do have enough bass so that if there's an explosion or something, uh, it, it does sound really good. So I, I recommend these mainly for, for gaming use and some music depending on your uh, music style. It doesn't really fit my taste as far as music goes. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised in games to find that the uh, frequencies, of, frequencies that matter are, you know, nice and clear. It's really, like I said, really good for games. Uh, not my cup of tea for music, but it may actually be uh, your cup of tea for music depending on what you listen to. So there you have it. Uh, that's the review of the Funk HS260. One hell of a durable headset. Yeah, this is making you cringe over there to hear that. Oh, they're just breaking in. <laughs> I'm so mean to these things. Um, again, my favorite feature is the fact that you can change the cord from one side to the other, and you can remove the mic, put it on one side or the other, and the build quality is top notch. See you guys next time. It's got like a velvety stuff on the inside. I'm gonna sleep with this. The, and just the inside of it. I feel like I'm on Sesame Street. Headset! Headphones! Left-handed. Go in there. Uh, uh. Headset! Well, that was way too much fun. Cups? cups. Pads. I call them cups. You call them cups? Well, the whole thing's a cup and it's a pad. Well, I put the... The whole thing's a can and that's a cup. <laughs> I got a can on a cup with a pad on top.